<coughs> Thank you very much indeed. I'm Paul Muldoon. And I'm going to read a poem this evening about a drug trip. And it occurred to me just as I was crossing the stage there, or perhaps a little before, that in some sense, and I think in a profound sense, every poem is a drug trip, both in terms of its being written and in terms of its being read, since those two um, processes, as you know, are intimately uh, bound up. One of the reasons I would suggest to you why we make art is that it makes us feel good. The, endor the endorphins. I, I knew you, you were wondering when that word was first going to be used this evening. <clears throat> the endorphins that are released, according to scientists, when connections are made in the brain, when something is found to be like something else, which of course is at the heart of much art making, the simile, the metaphor, the far-fetched connection, in fact, being the most exciting. There's really no point in saying, my love is like my love. My love is like a red, red rose. It's becoming slightly more interesting. My relationship with my beloved um, and, the, and, and in the marriage bed is very much embodied in this flea. Then things are really interesting. <laughs> and <clears throat> when we read that John Donne poem and when John Donne was in the act of writing it, he was all a buzz. And the reason why he wrote another poem the following week was that he was coming back for more. Now, the sense that we have in that experience of standing slightly to one side of ourselves, of being involved in an ecstatic event, which is beyond place and time, is the one for which we keep on coming back. So with that in mind, I'm going to read a poem about, it's called Gathering Mushrooms. My father was a mushroom farmer, though the mushroom, and there are shots, as it were. It's quite filmic, I suppose, in its way. It was written in the early 1980s in Northern Ireland, a time in which uh, the dirty protest, as it was known, when uh, political prisoners, at least as they uh, presented themselves, uh, went on the blanket, refused uh, to uh, wash, smeared the walls of their, their cells with their own excrement, uh, went on hunger strike, one of the most difficult periods in recent Irish history, is somewhere in the background. The father gathering mushrooms in the conventional sense, but also in here, of course, that dangerous little item the magic mushroom, psilocybin. So <clears throat> um, let me just mention a couple of uh, places. As they fly by your ear, it might be difficult to hold on. Barnet's Domain is a park in South Belfast, uh, which is quite famous, among other things, for its magic mushrooms. Malone House. Uh, kept a collection of l Irish linen. It was firebombed. The Lagan is the river, of course, that runs through Belfast. Um, I mentioned, I use the word allegro, and some of you may remember 
John Allegro, I use it here, of course, as a musical description or instruction. John Allegro was the author of a book I'm sure many of you have read, The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross, in which he presented the theory that Christianity derived from a bunch of mushroom-eating hippies. <laughs> Don't you sigh for the days when that kind of theory had legs? <laughs> so here we go. So as I say, I'm just going to read this poem as an embodiment of something, the experience of standing outside oneself, of being perceived in this case in my own case, as a character in this poem, as a talking horse. Gathering mushrooms. The rain comes flapping through the yard like a tablecloth that she hand embroidered. My mother has left it on the line. It is sodden with rain. The mushroom shed is windowless, wide, its high-stacked wooden trays hosed down with formaldehyde. And my father has opened the gates of Troy to that first load of horse manure, barley straw, gypsum, dried blood, ammonia. Wagon after wagon blusters in a self-renewing gold-black dragon we push to the back of the mind. We have taken our pitchforks to the wind. All brought back to me that September evening, 15 years on, the pair of us tripping through Barnet's fair domain like girls in long dresses after a hailstorm. We might have been thinking of the firebomb that sent Malone House sky high and its priceless collection of linen sky high. We might have wept with Elizabeth McCrum. We were thinking only of psilocybin. You sang of the maid you met on the dewy grass, and she stooped so low, gave me to know it was mushrooms she was gathering, oh. He'll be wearing that same old donkey jacket and the sawn-off waders. He carries a knife, two punnets, a bucket. He reaches far into his own shadow. We'll have taken him unawares and stand behind him slightly to one side. He is one of those ancient warriors before the rising tide. He'll glance back from under his peaked cap without breaking rhythm. His coaxing a mushroom, a flat or a cup, the neck against his right thumb, the bucket then, the punnet, left or right, and so on and so forth, till kingdom come. We followed the overgrown towpath by the lagon. The sunset would deepen through cinnamon to aubergine, the wood pigeon's concerto for oboe and strings, allegro, blowing your mind. And you were suddenly out of my cane, hurtling towards the ever-receding round, into the maw, of a shimmering green gold dragon. You discovered yourself in some outbuilding with your long lost companion, me. Though my head had grown into the head of a horse that shook its dirty fair mane and spoke this verse. Come back to us. However cold and raw, your feet were always meant to negotiate terms with bare cement. Beyond this concrete wall is a wall of concrete and barbed wire. Your only hope is to come back. 
If sing, you must. Let your song tell of treading your own dung. Let straw and dung give a spring to your step. If we never live to see the day we leap into our true domain, lie down with us now and wrap yourself in the soiled grey blanket of Irish rain that will one day bleach itself white. Lie down with us and wait. <laughs>